account in Zoom, your students don't need an account. You will simply send them a link and they will be able to join your webinar. One thing is, I'm just going to, if you click over and have a quick look at the pricing, just to make it clear from what I understand, and it does seem that occasionally they change these things, but currently, if you're working in a one-to-one -one situation, then you are not limited. You can actually uh, just practice for as long as you like. And I've been practicing with this for hours and hours uh, in the free version to, to really understand how it works. If you're working with bigger groups of between three and eight students, you are limited to only 45 minutes. But the free plan can be a good way to start because you can at least practice and make sure that you know how to work with Zoom. So that so I've got an account, so I'm just gonna jump over to my account so we can actually start now to create straight away our first actual Zoom. And to do that, all I need to do, I'm gonna click on my account, is click on schedule a meeting. That's the easiest way to do it. Schedule a meeting, and we're gonna create a meeting and get someone in the class quickly. So I'm just gonna write in a quick uh, meeting with Keith. Okay, so as I said, I'm gonna meet up with a friend of mine in a minute and go through a lesson with him so that we've got both the teacher view and the student view. I don't need to put anything else. The only thing I need to do is choose the date, choose the time, so you can do that from here. Decide how long it's gonna be. So for example, whether you're gonna do it for one or two hours. Uh, make sure that you've got the right time zone for you and a couple of little tips now to really help you with this. If you come down here, my tip to you is set it so host, that's the person that's actually setting up the uh, Zoom is on video, but that the participants aren't. If you've got 10, 15, 20 students in the class and they've all got their webcams on, this is really gonna slow down the quality of the Zoom. So my tip to you is not to do that. You can turn on their audio, uh, their videos at a later stage anyway. So I always start with the videos off. Here you want both. I very much doubt if any of your students are gonna telephone in, but that would mean that actually they can use both telephone and computer for the audio. Come down to the bottom here, couple of other things to keep in mind. This can be useful as well. Mute participants on entry. Why? Well, because if you've got 20 students all coming in and suddenly they are um, all chatting, then that's gonna create a lot of noise. You really can only have one person talking at a time when you're working uh, with a kind of webinar online classroom. So my tip for you would be to choose that and then to click on save. Now, once you've clicked on save, there's a couple of really useful things. First of all, here is the link to the actual webinar, and you just simply send that to your students. But one thing that Zoom does that's really helpful is they create this really simple invitation, and I can literally copy the top part of that invitation because I know that uh, my friend is gonna connect on a link and just copy that and email it or paste it into a website or wherever you want, people know that they click on that button and they can join your webinar. So I've just sent an invitation to my friend. I've just emailed him that invitation so I know that any minute now he's gonna click and join. So let's start the meeting. And to start the meeting, we click here. Just click on start meeting. Now, Zoom does require a little plugin. And so you do need to download the plugin onto your computer. Once you've got it, you should see this button here, which is gonna open up Zoom. If you haven't got the plugin, you will need to download it for the first time, download and run the plugin. Once you've got it on your computer, you've got it forever, hopefully, and therefore you'll just simply be able to start your Zooms by clicking here. So I'm gonna do that. And it's gonna bring me into a little window where it's gonna ask me, first of all, to check my sound. First of all, click on this button and test that your sound is working. So you can do this by just, uh, do you hear a ringtone, okay? And the second one, you can say yes. And then the second one, in fact, I'm gonna change that and use this one here. So let's, yeah, that's okay. And then I'm gonna say, to say, hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. And yes, it's working, so I'm gonna click on yes. So now I'm ready now, okay? And this is the important thing. Once you've said yes to those, you then need to click on this button, join with computer audio. 
this will come up on the screen. Join and make sure you click on that because it's that that actually activates both your audio for hearing and for the speaking. So click on that button and you should be started, okay? And hopefully come into the room. Okay, we're on Zoom now and I'm sorry that you've got a ginormous face of me uh, presenting to you and if I can turn that off so what you can see here the important thing is when you roll your cursor over you'll see that the controls the most of the controls are at the bottom and I'm going to point out a couple of really important things first of all you're going to want to open up the chat window click on this button and that's going to open up the chat to the right hand side obviously that's going to be one of the quick ways that you can communicate with your students so I'm just going to click on that button now and you can see now it's opened up the chat window here on the right hand side so you can close that if you click on it again it's going to close but open it up and you can say hello and anyone that's joining your room will be able to see that so that's the first thing now the second thing is you have actually got control of your video and just for a minute I'm going to turn the video off if I come over here to the right hand side then if I click here you'll notice that I can click on stop video but I can also restart the video at any time, okay, by clicking here. Now, let's go through some of the most important settings. Now, another button that people get confused about is this button here. Again, rolling down. Make sure that you click here because it's going to show you when participants join the room. At the moment, it's just me in the room, and we'll be talking about that in a minute. But in a minute, you'll see that other people can join the room, and that's where I'll see that they join. Remember, you've sent an invitation out, and all your students should be able to join the room. And as long as you've got that button turned on, you will see all of the people as they join, and here is where your chat will be, okay? Let's say that you've sent out your invitations, but you've forgot to send an invitation to someone and you've already got your room open. Is there any way you can quickly get the link to them? Well, actually, yes. If you come up to the here on the left and click here, you can actually see the invitation URL and you can even copy that. So you can be in the middle of a presentation and quickly jump out, open up your email and send the invitation to someone if you need to. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna log in on another account in another browser. I'm gonna log in to my own Zoom. So I'm gonna open up another browser and log in using that link so that then we can start to see what the students see. Okay, so I'm now logged in as a student and I want to, you to realize something. If you look here, first of all, obviously the teacher hasn't turned on the video, so we can't see the teacher. But also the chat room is not available and this is one of the mistakes that a lot of teachers make and it is one of the problems with Zoom. In other words, if you as a teacher open your chat window, that does not mean that the chat window is open to the students. The students would still need to click here to open up the chat window to, to make sure that the chat window is available to them. So they need to do that. And the same with the participants window, okay? So now they can see themselves and they can see their teacher. This is a problem with Zoom, as I said, it's not necessarily my tool of choice because there are certain things about it that I don't like one of them is that that you haven't got enough control over certain features uh, you might do something as the teacher and think your students can see it and they can't so you need to explain to them that they need to click on both the participants window and the chat window as well to make sure that they can communicate with the students. Now in this case now, we've got both of the windows open. They can see themselves, I've called, yeah, the student is called Tom and they can see the uh, teacher here and they can also chat by just clicking here at the bottom and say hello everyone and that is sent to everybody in the room. Sorry, I spelled that wrong. 